Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to Spec Serta Prep's webinar on clean laboratory techniques. My name is Peter Esco, and I will be moderating today. Before we begin, I'd like to get a few housekeeping items out of the way. Everyone who registered today will be sent a copy of the presentation slides. And the webinar is being re recorded and will be posted on our website so that you may watch it at any time you like. The video will be posted sometime next week, and you will receive a follow-up email with a link when it's available. Any questions you may have will be answered at the end of the webinar. Simply type them in the question box as you think of them, and they will be answered during the Q&A session. With that out of the way, let's get on with today's presentation. I would like to introduce Vanija Sivakumar. Vanija received her PhD from the Department of Inorganic and Physical Chemistry from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, India. She worked with Lever Brothers India as a research chemist for nine years before coming to Spexer to prep 20 years ago as the QA and regulatory manager. She is currently our vice president of manufacturing. Vanija, I'll pass it off to you. Thank you, Peter. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Accurate and precise measurements in an analytical lab not only depends on the skill of the analyst, but also on the environment and the tools we provide. Today, I'm going to talk about some of the techniques and tools that can be useful in analyzing the concentration of ultra-low level trace elements. Technology in the manufacture of instruments has evolved leaps and bounds in the past few decades. Detection limits have decreased tremendously. Instruments with these new innovative technologies can detect trace impurities in PPB, that is microgram per liter, or PPT, that is nanogram per liter, or even at quadrillion, parts per quadrillion, that is picogram per liter. Such instruments are of no use if we do not identify, minimize, or eliminate totally such impurities. The reason is these impurities can cause interference and produce inaccurate results. For accurate trace metal analysis at these low levels, we must avoid contaminating the reference materials and the reagents we use, samples we analyze, and most of all, minimize the contribution from the environment. Just how much is a part per billion or a trillion? These terms, parts per billion and parts per trillion, are abstract terms. We can understand this better if I express this in real units that are more familiar to us. Take, for instance, unit of time, second. One second in 32 years is one part per billion. One second in 320 centuries is one part per trillion. Money, which we all love, one cent in $10 million is one part per billion. One cent in $10 billion is one part per trillion. Volume, one drop of vermouth in 500 barrels of gin is one part per billion. One drop of vermouth in 500,000 barrels of gin is one one part per trillion. Unit of length, inch. One inch in 16,000 miles is one part per billion. One inch in 16 million miles is one part per trillion. In these days, analysis at low level is not limited by the instrumentation. Limitation comes from interference due to contamination of elements that are of not your interest. What are the sources of contamination? We use reference materials to calibrate our instruments. Starting materials used in the preparation may contain trace impurities. You also use various digestion methods to prepare your samples for analysis. Water, acid, and even laboratory wear can add impurities. Storage containers can leach impurities into solution. Most of all, the laboratory environment is cause for concern. 
The certified reference material, in future, I'll be abbreviating this as CRM, is made from very high pure metals. Where such high pure metals are not available, they are produced from very high pure compounds. In addition to assaying the metal content before its use in CRM, the starting material should be tested for trace impurities. These impurities can cause overlap of spectra, producing inaccurate results. Besides these trace metal impurities, anions like chloride, fluoride, oxalate, and sulfate contaminants have to be identified because the presence of these ions can precipitate elements such as silver, lead, barium, and rare earth elements. The major component of an aqueous standard is water. Water is also used in a large quantity by your lab. The overall quality and accuracy of analysis depends on the quality of water that is used. American Society of Testing Materials, ASTM, specifies four types of water. Type 1 is recommended for trace metal analysis. What are the specifications for type 1? Total dissolved solids should be less than 0.1 milligram per liter for type 1. Specific resistance should be between 15 to 18 megaohms per centimeter. The pH is not applicable here because ASTM eliminated this from specification for this grade of water does not contain constituents in sufficient quantity to significantly alter the pH. Color retention time for potassium permanganate should be greater than 60 minutes. Soluble silica should not be detected. Bacterial count should be zero colonies per mil. This shows the state of the art ASTM type 1 water system used by Spec Prep. City water is pumped through a 10 micron filter and water softener tanks. Sodium is exchanged for hardness imparting calcium and magnesium. It then passes through a 5 micron filter and a UV disinfection process. Water from here is taken to reverse osmosis column where salt content is reduced and to then two tanks of mixed bed resins to remove all cations and anions leaving behind hydrogen ion and hydroxide molecules. Before the point of use, water gets polished by two virgin tanks, disinfected, filtered once again by a 0.2 micron filter. After all this process, water shows a resistance of 15 to 18 megaohms per centimeter, disinfected, filtered, and is ready to use in the lab. Water does produce exceed the expectation of ASTM type 1 water and is fit for use in trace metal analysis. As it play a major role in sample analysis, you use it for dissolution of materials or samples, for digestions and dilutions. Contaminants present in acids can contribute to erroneous results. Any part of the analytical process must use high purity acid. For example, if you use 5 ml of an acid with 100 ppb nickel diluted to 100 ml volume can introduce 5 ppb of nickel in the sample. Hence, you need a very high pure acid. But very high pure acids are 10 times more expensive than technical grade acids. An economic and effective way to produce ultra-high pure acid is to use a PDFA acid still. This employs a distillation method of surface evaporation without boiling through the use of infrared heaters. The created acid vapor is condensed and collected in a PFA or a Teflon bottle. This process avoids transport of particulate aerosol with the distillate. PDFA still can handle all common acids except sulfuric acid. 
With this process, majority of the metals can be reduced below microgram per liter in a single distillation 